Uh, OK, so first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, invitation, Professor Zhen and Professor Bao. <laughs> OK, he's here. And uh, second time to be here. And I think the first time three years ago. It's also a program about the, the interface problem. OK, so today I'm going to uh, talk about just a, like a summary of my recent research, actually. It's a kind of review talk. I'm not going to uh, uh, say uh, some details about this problem. Just, you know, I prepared this talk uh, one month ago as I give a talk in the Beijing Zhou So anyway, uh, I don't list the name for my collaborators. For each topic, I'm going to mention the names and uh, my collaborators. And uh, this is supported by an FC grant. So here is the outline of my talk. I'm going to talk about the, uh, some waves in the complex medium. We know that the, carrier, the carrying medium is very important for waves propagation. The complex medium, lots of, tons of complex mediums. Here I just mentioned three and uh, several kinds of waves. The first one is water waves on a liquid surface. So we can see the water wave surface, water wave. We also have, there are also some internal waves inside the ocean. I'm not going to mention it. Actually, this is a, a research direction I studied for my PhD. And the, the second one is the elastic wave in solids, including two. The first one is just the homogeneous elastic solids. The second one is a porous medium. I'm going to talk about the second one, and the first one just analysis. For the second one, I'm going to talk about our a numerical a simulation or numerical modeling. For the third part is the electromagnetic waves in fluids. So this is a, a part of my work uh, starting from my postdoc and uh, I'm com just continue to do some research in this direction, including three parts, compressible, actually compressible idea MHD equation and incompressible MHD equation. And also in low frequency, there is a kind, it, it's called the code plasma equations. Okay, also, uh, as we consider this problem, so we need, because it's the design or the numerical solution for this problem, so we also develop some numerical method. In particular, here, just to make a brief introduction on our recent work on central DG. It's a, a variety of the DG. We know the local DG or whatever, the interior panel, panel DG. There are many, it's a big family for DG. And here, just central DG. So first one, the water wave equations. So if we define the potential, the gradient of potential is a, field, is, a, is a velocity field, and we know the water is incompressible, so the divergence of the gradient of phase equal to zero is, gives us the, the governing equation in the whole domain of the problem. So uh, including the surface and the inside until the, until the bottom of the water. And also we have the um, boundary condition on the bottom, and B here is the bottom topography of the of the water, and we have the kinetic boundary condition and the dynamic boundary condition. So it's it's a certain it's a certain used for the numerical computation because most time we are interested in the surface water waves. If we simulate this boundary value problem, we get lots of useless data because you know you compute the v in s sigma, including the boundary, the the area below the surface. So we don't need that. So many, there are many, many approximation models for the simulation or analysis of the water waves. But however, for this kind of model, it's for long, sorry, it's for, it's for the long linear, oh, sorry about that. It's a for the long linear and uh, for the dispersive. So for all approximation models of uh, water waves, we have to do the balance between these two kinds of important properties of the water waves. For the nonlinearity, so you have the, you can, if you have the strong nonlinear, strongly nonlinear model, you can simulate, use that, simulate the tsunami with the amplitude very large, okay? For the KDV equation, it's weakly nonlinear. So the amplitude is quite small for the numerical simulation. For the dispersion, dispersion is kind of effect to preserve the shape of the water wave. If you have the strong dispersion, then it's very hard to get the wave breaking. But some, most of the time, we want the wave or the model to preserve the shape uh, where. So that's, uh, that's the two things we have to balance, okay? So B 
before we go to the hours model, we just take a look at two, more, uh, two examples. The first one is a solitary wave. This is a coast propagating to the left. Here, we have the amplitude for the solitary wave, okay? And uh, approaching that and, the, and going down. If the coast is not that high enough, you just think, okay, just the sh you have the shoring wave and uh, passing the bar, okay? Now, this graph, there are three sets of data. For the red circle is the experimental data, okay? And for the other one, dash nine and the black dot are two sets of numerical results from two different numerical models. For the dash nine, it's from the Sari hyperbolic shallow water waves. That's a standard shallow water wave used widely. This one, the black dot, is the numerical results for the green lofty model. Green lofty model is kind of shallow water wave, strongly nonlinear, and the weakly dispersion. But however, we have dispersion. Okay, compared to the shallow water wave, the dash nine, they are in the same level on nonlinearity. If you use the a KDV equation, you cannot simulate the running up of solid wave with such a large value of eta, which is 0 0.28. For most the KDV simulate just 0 0.05, 0 0.03 are good enough. That's a nonlinearity. I'm not going to talk about the parameters, just the you know, dimension is uh, Anyway, now that's the, the same level for the shadow. But however, considering the dispersion, the green lovely model is much, much better because we can see that for the numerical simulation, the green lovely model can be used to pre preserve the shape of the wave, a wave very well, much better than the, the, the hyperbolic uh, shadow water waves. So that's the first example. The second one, we have the Stokes waves. This is, there is a wave mapping here. Then propagating, passing this bar. It's just like, okay, there's three gauge bar, or something like that. And for the running up, it's okay for the effect of dispersion. But as running down, we know as we're running, running down the ski, uh, here, it's very hard to get the shape of the body. So it will give a new or extra challenge for the dispersion effect for the model. So that's the reason why we want to make some improvements for the model. So we can see that the numerical results. Here, we have, uh, there are several uh, viewpoints here. One, two, it's up to 10. We can see here six, seven, eight. We can see the numerical results. There are also three sets of numerical data. Okay, sorry, there are two sets of numerical data and one, ex one set of experimental data, which is represented using red dot, we can see that. Whatever kind of numerical method we use, we can see that numerical results for these viewpoints just running down. The face changed a lot, and the shape changed a lot, okay? So that means the dispersion effect is not strong enough to preserve the shape of the water waves. So that's the motivation we want to make the uh, improvement for the, for the model. So the, the idea is quite, is quite simple. This is uh, called the green novelty model, uh, flat bottom and the long flat bottom, and uh, this just modeling. This paper is analysis for the green novelty model, published the invention, uh, pure math. But anyway, they just uh, make some analysis and modeling. And it's, it's not easy for computation. It just recently, I think just the past several years, there are lots of researchers working on the numerical simulation for this model. It's very hard for the simulation. But however, it gives us some results. I just mentioned that. But it's not. There are not enough dispersion for some examples. So we want to make some improvement for that. The idea is simple, is that we just make a linear compilation between the linear part and the high order part. The high order part will give you the nonlinearity. The linear part just preserves the dispersion. Its idea just comes from the numerical solution uh, for the heat equation. We knew that there is a method which is called theta method, okay? The combination of the explicit and the implicit, okay? The idea is, simple. but we have to do the analysis why it works, okay? So the analysis just, I think just a college student can do that. Just make the Fourier analysis, you can see. Uh, the analysis here. For this one, I think a red, 
dash nine is the exact water wave equations, and the blue salt line is our model with the alpha, which is point, I think is here, is 1.158. We find the optimal uh, value for the alpha, which is just give up in the combination between the linear part and high order part. And uh, for the typical or the uh, classical green nafti model, we can see that as the k, the wave number increases, you can see that the, the, the discrepancy between the exact model and the approximate model increases larger and larger, okay? Now, that's one thing. The second thing, you introduce the alpha, but the model is quite complicated. It's not that easy for numerical simulation. So we use our, I think it's a, a paper our, uh, published four years ago in JCP to make uh, <laughs> the computation for this model. We just introduced an uh, artificial variable to make the simplification. I'm not going to mention that. Okay, we can see uh, modeling high, there are some features here, uh, high and four long linear actually, and a strong dispersion. Just uh, one very, very slight step moving forward, we have a strong dispersion, just to introduce the alpha. And then after the introduction of the parameter alpha, it's not easy to for the computation, but we remove, by introducing an artificial variable, we remove the mixed time and the space derivatives. This is mentioned here, is this paper. And also we design some for the shallow water waves, so we have to design some balance schemes and the positive preserving schemes here. You know, for the stationary solution, we have to, to, to for, we have to uh, design such kind of uh, physical constraint preserving uh, schemes. But anyway, they just for the computation. Here I just mentioned the modeling and the computation. Okay, numerical results, here, the same numerical example, we can say there are much improved, a better improvements or whatever, a good improvements for the numerical model. We can see that there are also three data. The red circle is the numerical data. And, uh, and blue sonar numerical results with alpha is one, this is the optimal parameter we used and also alpha equal to one. We can see that the blue with the red matched well with each other. And the, the green is not that good, sort of line. It's from the alpha equal to one, the classical green nafti model. We can see the, the improvement for the, after the modeling. The second part, oh, 10 minutes passing, passed. Okay, so the second uh, model, the second problem I'm talking about today is uh, uh, elastic waves in the porous media. Okay, so for this kind of problem, even today, the development of the theory and the application of this kind of model are still on the way. There are lots of researchers working on this direction, okay? We can see here is a sandstone in the, for example, in, um, below the earth, and the surface of earth, and also the boom with austere porosis. So we, we just make the detection or inspection of the bone to see if there is a, some cancel of share for the for the for the bone, you just take some uh, specie and to get uh, to see that. Okay, we use the acoustic wave and uh, whatever. Okay, so the theory uh, back to uh, 1950 from Beard is very famous. There are thousands of citation for these two papers, and for high frequency, the theory is proposed by these three scientists. We call the JDK uh, theory. So I'm not going to talk about theory of the, this kind of elastic waves in the pulse media. We are going to do some research or propose some efficient or high order, stable numerical method to solve it. Now you will say, is there any difficult to solve it? Okay, let's take a look at the model. The model is just a system of hyperbolic equations. It's not that difficult. Okay, Q, just the uh, unknown vector stress and the velocity and the pressure, density, whatever. And uh, uh, this is a flux, okay? And here is the viscosity term. And this is a source term, S. If S is zero, the long linear, the long homogeneous term comes from the viscosity. If there's no viscosity, everything's fine, just the conservation laws. We solve that using the boundary integral, uh, sorry, DG method or finite difference method, whatever. However, most of the time, there is, or the viscosity is there. We cannot neglect the effect of viscosity. 
So that's the reason why it's, 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 it's hard to compute that. Okay, and um, moreover, even for the viscosity, we need to divide the viscosity into two parts. One is low frequency, the second one is high frequency. For the high frequency, it will give you a different story. So on the bottom of that, we have another, okay, anyway. So for the low frequency, I apologize for that. I prepared the slides with some Chinese uh, because, you know, uh, anyway, I talk with uh, Professor Bao, it's fine, but I need to talk in English. But anyway, for the low frequency, the, the viscosity takes a form like this. And the, for the f high frequency, the viscosity term takes a form here. D plus omega one, what's that? It's a fractional derivative. So with no fractional derivative or numerical fr uh, for the fractional PDE, it's kind of popular these days, but I never understand why this popular. But I work on this problem is there. So design of the efficient numerical method for the fractional PD is important, to be honest. But anyway, I'm not expert for the numerical solution for a fractional PD. But anyway, for the high frequency, design of efficient or faster numerical method for this kind of fractional derivative is important. So that is the challenge to design numerical method for the uh, elastic waves in the porous medium, okay? So, uh, in free space gives a dispersion right? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's the method I'm going to use for our, uh, for our computation of the high frequency. I, I'm going to mention that. Okay, even for the low frequency, for other methods, there is what we call characteristic decay time. You can say, okay, as the computational time, the step is larger than the, this time, we, have the, we are going to have a stiffness problem. So we need to compute the AX equal to B problem. So they just use a, a, a splitting operator method. I'm not going to mention that. And uh, actually, O is a, a, a co-author of our, this uh, project. And we use DG method, we know the CFL number, the time step is, is, is for the uh, issue of stability is much small. We don't have this kind of problem to solve the stiffness problem, but we need much, much more time steps to make the computation, it's fine. You know, DG is uh, friendly to parallel compu computing, something like that. Okay, for the high frequency, uh, there are some work. So, do and the two groups. They just introduce, um, we call the memory variable, it's not, not, it's not new, uh, to change the fractional derivative into the regular derivatives and then make the computation, okay? So now for us, uh, actually that's an idea I talked with Professor O, I think it's, uh, he published the, the idea a little bit in the inverse problem, but anyway, the dynamic, not this one, I don't delay that, this one, uh, total city, I don't know the Chinese name, <laughs> anyway, there's a parameter for the elastic wave in the porous medium. In frequency domain, approximately utilizing the mighty points, uh, uh, petty approximation for the steer jacket's function. So that's uh, the Fourier in the, in, the, in, the, in the frequency domain. And then we use the inverse Laplace uh, transform to get the, uh, the governing equation without fractional derivative. And uh, the convolution kernel just a set of ODA and then we make the computer. That's the basic idea. And this is the mathematical formulation. And we, you can see here Q, there are much, much more variables for the Q here. Basic, originally there are eight up to here, okay? It's the speed for the uh, leads, and the peer pressure, and the, this velocity, and the stress. And we introduce these uh, variables. And then just the ODE, just make the computation for that, okay? And, uh, this is a mathematical reference. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, one hard example for the high frequency. And there is a point source here, and uh, uh, we make the computation at t equal to a very small, okay, small number. And we also compare this one with other results. It matches well. And for our methods, it's fast. And we don't need to save all the memory variables, okay? It's faster than the, the, the loose method, okay? So. Okay, the, the third part is uh, elastic waves in the fluid area, okay? So we are interested in this kind of problem of, uh, um, how to say it, is uh, we know, um, 
uh, can be modeled using the MHD equation for the plasma phenomenon. And plasma uh, occupies the 90 line a substance for the um, for the Yuzhou, okay? We can see the liquid and the water and the air, but the plasma is the most popular uh, substance. Uh, and anyway, so if we want to describe this kind of phenomenon, there are two ways to go. And this, this kind of velocity of Maxwell equation is also popular for the numerical analysis and the computation. And, and we are in this direction. We're interested in this direction through the description. And there is a connection between these two kinds of uh, direction. We use the Zhu Fa, the Li Ruo, they do a lot. OK, we call the velocity moment, movements, OK, Zhu Fang Fa, whatever. Now, for the through the description, after some assumptions, we also get some uh, simplified models. For the nonlinear Judo model, that's called the cold plasma. Code, that's, that's uh, one model I'm going to mention. And for low frequency MHD equation, for MHD equation, it's also compressible and incompressible. And, uh, and also ID MHD, lots of MHD equations, okay? Anyway, so I'm going to mention three models for the uh, uh, elect uh, electromagnetic waves in fluids for in this direction. The first one is ID MHD equation, which is compressible. I started work at that in 2009 with Professor Feng Yan Li, working on the divergent free scheme. Okay. So this is the idea MHD equation, and a set of hyperbolic equations. Okay. So for the, even for this kind of, uh, for, even for the numerical solution of this kind of uh, model, we know hyperbolic equation, the initial condition, uh, condition is smooth as the time increases. And we have the discontinuous solution, the shocks. We need to design uh, numerical solutions or numerical schemes to capture the shocks. Okay, that's, a, that's a very popular in the past 40 and 50 years. But anyway, there are two more constraints. That's called uh, physical constraint. We need to design physical constraint preserving schemes. The first one is the divergence of the mag magnetic field B0. That means initially, it is zero. We it is desirable to, you know, to, to, to de design numerical schemes to, to preserve this constraint. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is this one. P is a pressure. It is a derived quantity. This is conservative, total energy. And the U, velocity, B, magnetic field, zero is the density. So for each time step, we obtain the conserved quantity. Then we use this formula to compute the P. It's derived quantity. For some, for some examples, total energy is very close to the momentum energy and the magnetic energy. Numerical errors will give the negative, negative uh, pressure. So we need to design positive preserving for the pressure schemes. That's the second one. OK, so we did lots of work for the divergent free. And uh, here, I just introduced our new work for pressure preserving, positive preserving scheme. So I just mentioned the Zhang Xiangxiong and the Su Qi Wang's limiter for the uh, Ola equation. The idea is uh, quite simple. So we define an admissible set G, which is U, this is Ola equation, dot MHD equation. Zero larger than zero, P is a derived quantity dependent on U. U is an unknown vector, larger than zero. Okay, so assume it's a time step T equal to Tn. So these are just three points, J, xj, xj minus 1, xj plus 1, is in the admissible set. We need to design the scheme to get this kind of, of solution, numerical solution at the time level tn plus 1 to be in g. That's quite normal. It's then, you know, straightforward. OK, let's take a look at the first kind of finite volume scheme we use, Lux Friedrich flux. OK, see that? And make a very simple rearrangement. We get three parts. OK, so the, re the idea is we just need to prove all three parts to be in G. For the, this one, this one, we can make it proved very simply, just a, stand for, a straightforward proof. For this one, we just make a very simple uh, assumption. One minus lambda A0 E larger than 0. OK, we knew that lambda is just a CF number. Uh, not, not CF number, sorry, CT, uh, delta T minus delta X, OK? So just the, the controlling the time step. But anyway, that, that assumption is reasonable. Okay, so we can get that. But for the MHD equation, 
No, it doesn't work. So our uh, the 2013 for this one, we just simply proved for one dimension. We cannot move on to the idea MHD equation for this one. Why? Because for this one, you can see that you have this term, you have this term. If bx equal to zero for one dimension, if bx equal to zero, this equation is MHD equation is reduced to the compressible Euler equation. So that we can make the proof. But for MHD equation, for these two terms which are lead, lead to be subtracted, it's hard to make the proof. No way to prove, actually. We, we prove that because we can make the contradiction, just mentioned here, OK? Now, we cannot make the proof by using Zhang and the Su's limiter to apply to the MHD equation. But it's not. We, we can go in another direction because compared to the Euler equation, compared to the Euler equation, MHD equation just there is one more uh, uh, vac uh, sorry, unknown, just the magnetic field, okay? So we, we have, for two dimensions, we have four unknown increasing to uh, six unknowns, okay? So we just make some choice or make some control for, the, uh, for this parameter, actually, A0, E. Okay. Now, we just use, uh, uh, introduce the Hadamard product. This is a joint work with Zhang Xiangxiong at Purdue University. And we just introduced the Hadamard product and to write the Lux Friedrich first order LF scheme for the MHD equation in the form like this. Similarly, we just need to prove three parts, this one, this one, this one to be in G. Okay? So by selecting, uh, sorry, by, the, uh, by selecting or choosing proper values for A. Okay? So we just make a proof. Uh, two parts, the first one, we need to prove a is alpha, alpha, beta, alpha. Alpha satisfies this one. We can prove the first part to be in G, okay? And uh, we also, if lambda multiply, or the product of lambda and beta, beta is here, okay? It's less than some positive number, okay? That's a, as a disadvantage of this kind of scheme. I, we cannot show what's the value for this number, but we can prove the existence of this value, this number, okay? Uh, anyway, we can, show, we can show this part to be in G, okay, and then make the proof. And also, I'd like to mention one work by Wu Kailiang, who was a PhD student of Professor Tang Hua Zhong, and he is a postal research assistant professor at Ohio State University right now. And his work with uh, Professor uh, Su Qi Wang just recently, they also make the proof. The name of the paper is approval uh, archive, you can see that. But they have to assume the divergence free condition. But for us, there is no such a restriction for the divergence free. In this paper, uh, in their paper, they use uh, nuclear divergence free to make the assumption. Anyway, the numerical result. Okay, 30 minutes, 10 minutes. And the second part for the MHD equation is incompressible MHD equations. So there's a typical incompressible MHD equations. And we have the divergence free condition for the velocity and also for curve free, whatever. It's an it's a, it's a old equation. There are many, many numerical analysts working on that. Okay? And uh, so there are some difficulties for the analysis and the numerical computation for this model. Here, we, we, for this model, we just make some uh, classical numerical analysis for that. Okay? So there are many, many difficulties for this kind of problem. For example, the first one is I'm going to talk about is actually it's our main interest. The irregularity on geometry for the real application of the electromagnetic waves, okay, leads a high regularity of the classical solution. If you don't make such assumption, you cannot get the numerical result you want. Okay, stability analysis, convergence analysis for the numerical solution. Okay, so that, that's one thing. I give the, for example, for the lung convex domain, we have the air lung convex domain, and the, okay, this boundary condition can only guarantee HS regularity for the magnetic field. The S lies between one half and one. Okay, so for the analysis, you have to assume, how to say it, hold the regularity for the classical solution so that you can move on to the numerical analysis. Okay, anyway, 
And the second part is the uh, incomparable condition for velocity u and the magnetic field h important. Okay, that's what is idea though, actually for the idea I measured the equation. But I haven't done any work for, for the comparable, uh, sorry, incomparable MHD. But anyway, for example, you have, we need to design numerical scheme to uh, deserve this one. For some, uh, some <coughs> cases, we need to design the, all the, the mixed finite element or long conforming for the curve free elements, for example, to, to, to make the analysis. But anyway, our work is here. We design a linearized Lagrange finite element method for incompressible MHD equations. And we, we don't make any assumption on the sufficient regularity or smoothness for the classical solutions to, to that. Uh, it's a tedious proof. And uh, just like uh, Zhonghua talked about this morning, I'm, I'm going to skip it. But anyway, we rewrite the form in the, the MHD equation, the form here, and uh, by introducing an artificial variable A. And uh, this is a numerical scheme. We use the first order, uh, first order for the for the time domain. And I just uh, you ask uh, Wang Chen to design. He 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 is interested in high order schemes. So I say we can try. But anyway, this is the first scheme we can make the analysis. And this is a joint work with uh, uh, your colleague uh, uh, Bu Yang. Anyway, and we have the numerical result here. And uh, for the third part of the MHD equation is, is a typically is an is a, is a application-oriented problem. So we are interested in the surface phenomena, particularly nonlinear magnetic or electromagnetic phenomena on the surface of the Lamy uh, metal. Okay? So this is a, is a phenomenon we can see using the, using the Xian Wei Jing, whatever, and, kind of, and published in the nature and the size. Now the numerical analysis just want to use the numerical model to simulate this kind of phenomena. And uh, there are one group using the nonlinear Jude model. And on the basis of this work, we just developed this model. We can see that. We use the conservation law of the uh, electron. And uh, uh, this is actually the conservation of the uh, mass. And this is the conservation of the uh, momentum, actually, it's a Newton's second law. And uh, Q is an uh, electron, and we have some parameters. E is an electricity field, and H is a magnetic field, and U is the uh, speed of the electron. And uh, some other, okay, here is a Fimi, uh, Thomas Fimi uh, uh, linear function there, actually. Now, so this is a typical nonlinear uh, hydrodynamic Jude model. We have the Maxwell equations inside omega 1, which is occupied by the metal Lamy in Lamy scale. And the omega 2 is the exterior region. And we have Maxwell. And we have the uh, momentum and the mass equation for the <coughs> electron. Okay? This is kind of multi physics. And we also have the interface conditions. So it's not that easy to, to design a numerical scheme for that, particularly for the finite difference. They introduce uh, some called, uh, uh, what's the name? Then uh, the transformation area, uh, something like that, and to make the computation feasible. But we don't need to. We use a DG, that's OK, to make the computation. And also, there are some non-local uh, Jude model and uh, linearized Jude model to simulate kinds of uh, phenomena for the uh, electromagnetic waves interacting with uh, metals. Okay, so I just mentioned the model. We're also interested for that. And uh, there are some work for that. For example, the infrequency, the linear Jude model, some work here, and uh, uh, some work here, actually. This is HD work and by, uh, it's, it's from MIT, and uh, not together with Cogburn. But I want to mention here, this model actually computed by my colleague, which, uh, who, uh, whose name is Li Niang, a PhD student of Huang Tingzhu. And uh, he visit, uh, visited the France and also uh, finished the one paper. I think also the same time, but the paper always uh, declined by the group because this guy just uh, submitted, you know, MIT group submitted the paper very quickly, and whatever. It's, a, it's a, whatever, just a, okay. So there are some challenges to simulate this kind of model, as I mentioned. Uh, multi physics and uh, discontinuous between the interface of the electron and the vacuum. Okay? And also it's a multi scale and, the, and the, the 
the exterior unbounded domain and the stability, something like that. But anyway, uh, we designed numerical, I skipped uh, uh, talking about the schemes. And the first example is for the accuracy. And we can see that the P2 and, uh, sorry, P1, P2, we can see the optimal order of accuracy for this kind of problem. And uh, this uh, is the problem we are interested in. We want to use this model to simulate. Don't forget that. We want to use this model to see all the improvements, all the modification of this model to simulate the kinds of electromagnetic phenomena. That is my, our motivation. So this is called, a, uh, I'm sorry, it's called blue shift, nan yi, okay? Uh, blue shift, nan yi, okay? It's like, okay, you can see that it's, from the, it's transformation from the uh, low frequency to high frequency, uh, high frequency, okay? So we can see that. And also here is, uh, nan yi is right here. And here is uh, gao ping xiang yin, it's a, it's a, it's a high frequency uh, xiang yin. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Yes, <laughs> uh, because I prepared the slides in Chinese and 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 the back and forth. But sorry, I I want to transform at noon, but it's you know, the time is too tight. Okay, and the third phenomenon is a, ha a harmonic. Actually, it's a high order harmonic generation, which means you have the uh, isn't the way with the frequency omega and interacting with the metal you can observe the high frequency um, okay, and uh, uh, production. We call high order harmonic wave generation. We can see that this is air shaft, okay? We have incident wave from uh, the top and uh, we're interacting with, we're interacting with the metal. This is a frequency of the incident wave. We can see here, we have the second harmonic generation, okay, observed. And here also, the, this one is a, a frequency with, uh, actually it's a, it's a length of wave, is 1,200, actually just 1,200. You can see that this is a linear, the red line is a linear with the same wave length. And here is a 600, it's a double, it's a half of the length of the incident wave. Okay. So all three, actually we, we simulated five different, very complicated, electromagnetic phenomena using one framework of numerical model. So that is what we did. It's not that easy for numerical computation, but anyway, also other things. Uh, I'm running out of time. Anyway, for the simulation of all these models, so we also are interested in some numerical methods, essential DG methods, actually. It's the main work I'm using for the simulation. It's, it's a, a very rare, uh, very rare of the DG method. We make some improvements for this kind of method. For example, divergent free CDG work with Professor Feng Yan Li and the um, uh, maximal principle certifying positive preserving central DG well balanced DG with my colleagues, Professor Di Mao Jun. And also recently we did some fast and uh, feasible uh, and uh, uh, CDG schemes. Uh, just two more minutes, okay. And uh, just a quick review for the uh, CDG. So for CDG, we need to uh, divide the computational domain into two parts with two meshes. So one is called a primal mesh, and the second one is dual mesh. So one dimension is pretty easy to understand that. II with the uh, black vertical line is a primal mesh, and for each mesh, we choose one interior point, then we have the dual mesh. They are overlapping with each other, so we have dual mesh. For each mesh, we define the numerical solution. It's just a polynomial, a space of polynomials. Okay? And then the central DG for the one-dimensional conservation law, multiplied by test function and the integral parts, we get two computational formulations for the central DG. Because on two measures, we, each mesh, we have one set of numerical solution. We use C and D to, make, uh, to differentiate the solutions. So for this one, the C is D second. The difference is here. For the uh, regular DG, we have the integral parts, then we have, the, we have to take the values for the ends of the elements or the skeleton of the end. But it's, the value there is not well defined. But for the central DG, the end of the elements, but the, anim, the end of the elements is the interior point of uh, another mesh. So we have to just choose the value for the uh, functions uh, from another set of mesh. That's a 
just the basic idea. But however, these advantages is, include you have to compute two sets of numerical solution. The second one, you have to make the con uh, construction of the uh, unstructured gra uh, grid. For example, for the, you just a structured grid that's very simple for the overlapping, but for the unstructured, it's not that easy to design overlapping mesh. There are two disadvantages. But advantages, lots of advantages. For example, you don't need to solve the Riemann solvers for the numerical flux, okay, because you just take the value from the inside. Okay, we have some work, and uh, we have some, recently, we have some uh, fast scheme, it's called reconstruct. I, I'm not, I, I didn't put my name on these two papers, but anyway, uh, we, we did some work for that. And uh, we make the proof for the high order accuracy. And also the unstructured overlapping mesh, they're very simple, but we have to make the proof of the stability and accurate, accuracy analysis. We just, uh, for the primal mesh, we just uh, uh, divide the computer domain, and for each triangle, we select uh, an interior point, and collecting the interior point with the uh, uh, vertex to get the, the overlapping mesh, and then just to make the analysis, okay? And uh, this is a numerical result. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the case for this one, actually. Mm, it's not for this one. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's, 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 it's Lots of people using the finite element and also spectral, but for the for digital, yeah, P wave, something. Uh, P, yeah. Yes. Uh, how yes. To this, uh, so how to select the optimal? I just make the analysis. You can see that you just, uh, just like the uh, we we know the dispersion, the relationship between the dispersion and the frequency. Yeah. Okay. You just make the maximum uh, frequency to get the alpha. Okay. So we know that for the just that wave, yes. So we have omega is the uh, six square roots or something like that. Just for the linear. Okay. It's from the linear, from linear analysis. Okay. Okay, if no question, let's send the speaker again. Okay? So